Hello, my name's Ellie from Craft House Magic and today I'm going to show you how I make this scissor case. So this one's made up for scissors that measure up to five and a half inches. So you might have all different shapes and size ones, but they can still fit inside this case. You can see like that. So there's a number of pairs of scissors that I sell in my shop, but as long as your scissors measure um, no longer than five and a half inches, it will fit this particular case. I'll pop a link to any of the things that I show on the screen in the description bar down below. This case, you can see that there's a place to put scissors at the back. Here I've got a um, cable needle as well popped in there to use. There's an extra pocket at the front. I've popped some needles just in through the fabric so that I can use those for sewing ends in with my knitting and I've just pinned some bolt pins to the top there so I use it as a nice little kit to keep all my things together for sewing in ends in a knitting project but you could use it as part of your sewing kit as well. So this one's got a buttonhole on the top but I do have an example where I've done a loop as well I made this absolutely years ago and I just stitched a little loop there so that I could secure it to the front but you could also use a press stud on the top as well if you don't like doing buttonholes or loops. This size is a six inch square that is made for up to five and a half inch scissors and this one here I've actually made with a nine inch piece of patchwork for the top and the scissors that fit in this one are eight and a half inches so that's an eight and a half from top to tip and then if you're going to do a scissor case for scissors that are 11 inches long you want to cut an 11 inch square so hopefully you'll be able to adjust this to whatever scissor size that you have but I'm going to show you do these ones you can fit ones that are quite a lot less in so it doesn't have to go right to the end so if your scissors are a little bit shorter that's absolutely fine as well so to make this you need some six and a half inch squares so you need one for the lining one for the outside material and also you need some wadding as well so I'm using some soft and bright wadding here which is a polyester wadding it's nice and light and easy to use and you could also wash it as well and I've cut these pieces out ready to use I will be producing some kits for these and I will leave links to those below and they'll be in the fabrics just here if you want some fabrics that are also on my website but not available as kits yet just drop me a message and I'll make those up for you so you pop your outer fabric on top of your wadding square and then place your lining fabric on top of that so what you want to do here is make sure if your fabric is directional that you make a note of which is the bottom of the pattern so that you can leave the gap where you're going to sew round at the bottom of the actual print this one is a sort of multi-directional print um, but I think I'll probably leave the gap here because there's a couple of sheep that are this way around so I'm going to say this is the bottom. So I'll pop that on top of each other, layer it up nicely, try and make sure all three layers are lined up and I'll pop some pins in each corner. I've just put a green pin at the bottom so that's the edge I'm going to leave a gap and I'm going to put a pin in the other corners as well just to keep it all together. So the next thing I need to do is stitch around a quarter of an inch all the way around so I'm going to leave a gap of a few inches open on this side so that I can turn it the right way around. So I'm not going to forget to leave a gap so I'm going to start about here and then stitch all the way around a quarter of an inch. So now you have your square stitched all the way around, leaving a gap this side. I'm going to go to each of the corners and just snip them nicely um, so you get a nicer finish when you turn them inside out. So I do that to all of the corners and then I'll start turning it the right way. Now I've got it the right way, I'm going to use a pokey tool just to poke those corners out nice and neatly. Um, be careful not to push it too hard because you might break those stitches. Um, but just nuzzle it in nicely. And I run the point along the edge of where I've stitched as well because that will neaten up the end. There we go. 
tend to sort of get everything how I want it to be before I take it over the ironing board poke that edge in and then I'm just going to give this a nice press uh, making sure everything's flat you don't want to use an iron that's too hot otherwise you might shrink your wadding inside this so be careful with that just enough to press all the edges nice and neat so we're all nicely pressed and we've got the gap at this side here so I'm now going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way down these two sides um, just to be nice and neat. One little tip is that if you feel that you're a bit nervous about getting into this edge and out of it neatly, if you thread a needle and thread, go into the corner and have the thread as a tether and you can guide it with your hands through your machine and then I can hold the corner with that thread so that I've got more control over it. So I'm going to stitch down this edge and this edge um, so that we've got a nice stitch line an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I'm now just at the corner and I've got my thread here that I can use as a guide to hold the back of the work and then I can pull it a little bit as the sewing machine is trying to just get over the edge. So you can see that we've got a nice neat corner there because I used that thread to guide me out of it um, just to make sure it's super neat. I'm going to trim my threads and I'm actually going to stitch a buttonhole on this one but you could leave it at this point if you're going to do a press stud or a little tab. So I've now stitched a buttonhole on the edge of mine in that corner so this is the edge that's open and then we've stitched all the way round and stitched a buttonhole. You might want to mark where you're putting your buttonhole, but I've done this so many times, I can sort of eyeball where it needs to go. I'm now gonna cut open the buttonhole with a clover buttonhole cutter. Um, just be really careful you don't cut the thread. And there we go, that buttonhole is ready to use. So I've done an 18 millimeter buttonhole for the buttons that I'm using. So if you purchase one of the kits, the buttons that come with it will be these 14 millimeter. So an 18 millimeter buttonhole gives you plenty of room to get it open and closed. So the next thing you want to do is bring the side with the open hole across here. Now, I just tend to keep trying it until I've got it in the right place but you want it so when you close over the other side you've got a nice even fold on both sides and you can play around with it until you're happy with how it looks. But if you did want to measure how far across you needed to leave it, I'm leaving it three and a quarter inches to that edge there. And hopefully when I do this, it will be three and a quarter inches as well. Just a little bit over. So you can just fiddle it a little bit. So we've got three and a quarter inches both sides. There we go. So once you've folded that over, you can now stitch along this edge with a machine. Now, if you're not very confident with the sewing machine because you've got to stitch along this edge and close up that gap at the same time you might want to hand sew this same goes if you don't want to leave a stitch line on the back of your scissor case if you hand sew this to the inside here you'll get a nice it needs edge as well so I stitch that one then close it over and stitch along there so that that's all sewn up and the pockets are made so I'll go over to the sewing machine and do that so I've got it under the sewing machine ready to sew and I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge of here just so that I can close up that gap where we left an opening to turn it the right way. So we have one side completed. I've stitched about an eighth of an inch from the edge there. I've closed up that gap at the bottom. Now it's time to create the second pocket at the front. You can actually do it either side, so sometimes I do it so I'm doing this side first and then that side second, it doesn't really matter, um, doesn't make a lot of difference, you're still going to have two pockets. So I folded over that carefully and I'm going to do the same, I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge here. Again, you might find it easier to hand stitch this edge if you're not used to doing quite accurate machine sewing because um, that could be a little bit less stressful if you prefer doing hand sewing. 
So before I go and sew my button on here, I'm going to get the iron and give it a nice press and get the nose of the iron right into these corners and it makes them really nice and neat. Um, so I'm going to stitch a button on this one but of course you could do a press stud and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Now we're all nice and neatly pressed, I'm going to sew the button on. So I've got a, a length of grey cotton um, and I've got it doubled up. I'm just going to do a quilting knot and run the knot to the end um, of the thread. So hopefully you can see that, there's a big knot. I fold this over just to work out where I'm going to put the button. I want it about there, so I'm going to go into the fabric about three times just to secure that thread nicely and I can trim any threads off just to neaten that off before I put the button on and I like to go three passes um, wherever I go through the button just to give it plenty of thread there we go three times through that way and then we'll go three times through this way I just wrapped it around the shaft of the button three times and then I'm just going to do a knot a couple of times just to make sure it's secure and there we are we have a finished scissor case so I will be making up some kits and all these different fabrics so that you can have a go as well which will include the button the wadding and the fabrics for the inside and outside and I'll do it so that there's enough to make about six scissor cases um, next week I'll be putting a video out on how to make a DPN case and you can use these sets as well to make a DPN case and a scissor case if you want to so I've got to the point where I've stitched one side down and I've left out the buttonhole at the top here but I did do the top stitching around the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it, so that's how it's going to be when I've stitched it all together. But before I stitch this bit, I'm going to put the flap down and mark where I'm going to have the press stud. So I'm going to mark that point there, pop a pin and then transfer that mark to the inside there. So I've got a mark on the outside and on the inside where I'm going to put that press stud. So to make a hole where we've marked them, I've got an awl just to make a hole into your fabric. So I'm going to poke a hole in that side and a hole that side just to make it easier to get the press studs through. So this side you need to have it so that the top side is facing up like that. And then I'm going to put the female part of it on the top and then I'm going to clamp it with the clamp that comes with it. You can get prim tools like this um, but this was one I just got from eBay. So for this hole here you need to put the press stud going outwards um, so I'll pop that through the hole, close it tight and now that's ready to stitch so we'll just fold this over and stitch this along here like we did to this one you can see that I've done this one the opposite way around it really doesn't matter so I'll stitch that give it a little bit of a press and I'll show you what it looks like in the end so there we are all stitched in place and now we can use the little press stud at the top to close that up so that's two different methods of closure but of course like the example I had on here if you just sewed a little tab of material to the inside of it you could also do that method as well so three different methods of closure but the same principle I will leave a list of the sizes of squares you need to make for the different size scissors in the description bar down below if you have any questions just pop a comment below or email me on crafthousemagic at gmail.com and I can see if I can help you the kits will be available as soon as this video is up if you want to purchase those and I will also have a video next week on how to do a DPN case for double pointed needles hopefully you'll enjoy that as well so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!